Oh, careful, George. That field's chock full of poison ivy. And that stuff will really make you itch. Uh -huh. See the leaves? That's how you can tell. There's an old saying. Leaves of three, let them be. Uh -huh. woo, woo, woo. Oh, hey, George, you want to meet our new kids? Uh -huh. <laughs> See? <laughs> the are our kids. Kid is what you call a baby goat. Oh. Oh. Look at that. They chewed right through the latch. <laughs> and they chew on everything. Oh. <laughs> George had a great idea. Keep him out of trouble. <laughs> okay, if you think you can handle him, good luck. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Susie, Sammy, no! <laughs> Get out of my flowers! We're coming, Grandma. Land's sakes! Put down that begonia. <laughs> There had to be a better way to keep goats out of trouble than chasing them around all day. Oh, that's just the old dog pen. We don't use it anymore. George thought he'd solve the goat problem once and for all. But the goats thought differently. Uh -oh. oh no. Where'd they go this time? No. No. Have fun. George was going to make sure that this time, Sammy and Susie couldn't escape. Wrong again. better take the goats back home. I think your grandpa might be planning to give them away. <gasps> oh, it's too bad grandpa's giving the goats away just because they eat stuff. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I mean, look at Ulysses. He's stubborn. Uh... But grandpa's not giving him away. <laughs> Allie was right. Ulysses was stubborn but he was also useful. Sammy and Susie would be useful once they could give milk. If only there were a way they could be useful now. Hey, help Susie! Hey, Sammy! Careful, George! Poison ivy! Poison ivy? And the goats were eating it. Would they get a rash in their bellies? Well, they say goats have cast iron stomachs. I guess they can eat anything. George might have found a way for the kids to be useful. <laughs> oh, hi, George. Say, where are Allie and the goats? <laughs> Grandpa, look at Sammy and Susie. Well, I'll be. They're clearing my field. 
George figured out a way for them to be useful like Ulysses. They can eat poison ivy. They rip it right out by the roots. What do you know? Hey, I can plow this field now. I could plant alfalfa or, or, or bean sprouts. Rutabagas. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. Hey, you too, Susie. Hey, Rankins, is that goat eating your poison ivy? She sure is. They love it. They're clearing Grandpa's field for him. I got some poison ivy needs clearing out, too. Can I borrow them? Uh-huh. You bet, mister. And that's how George and Allie's lawn service was born. Best of all, George and Allie's lawnmowers didn't need gas. This supplies your air. Now just breathe naturally, George. Uh -huh. <laughs> your helmet contains a camera, microphone, and headphones. This locator will flash when you're close to the satellite. Be a good little sea monkey. <laughs> Careful, don't get distracted. <laughs> the reef's home to all kinds of sea life. Sort of like our big city is home to all kinds of people. <gasps> what happened? George, can you hear us? <laughs> the coral reef was so much fun, George almost forgot why he was there. You're near the satellite. Head to the sea floor. Can you see it? The what? Did you find it? Nice. But we're not looking for crabs, George. Those are small reef sharks. They are not interested in monkeys. The coral reef supplies them with food. Huh? <laughs> he found it! That's my monkey. George, can you see an open place to move the satellite to? Good. Now release your emergency marker. I'll fly over and drop you a line.
Data module's intact. Our research is saved. Thanks to George. George! Oh, George. George! Yep. <laughs> Flying in a helicopter was fun. But George liked exploring the ocean better, because in the sky, there are no sea turtles. So the next morning, the man with the yellow hat packed a picnic lunch. I think we have all the ingredients it takes to relax one professor. Well, this is all going perfectly. I think you'd like a pickle. Turn it like this. This is sure to relax you. Well, honestly, I'm just as happy sitting on the ground. But what could be more relaxing than hanging from a tree? <laughs> Watch. You just lie back and let your troubles melt away. <laughs> oh, thanks, George. <laughs> uh, George? Whoa. 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 Are you hurt? No, I, uh, I landed on my hat. Uh, oh no, only an hour left to squeeze in some real relaxation. Now, we're not gonna create any more work for Professor Wiseman, right? <laughs> okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Feed the ducks. <laughs> you too. Fun, relaxation, ducks. Okay, here I go. <laughs> George, careful. <laughs> No problem, we're still feeding them, right? It's fun, huh? Right? Ducks! But your hat is waddling away. <laughs> oh, my hat. We can solve this problem. You shouldn't. I, I should. Okay, how? <gasps> Aha! We can use the kite string to fish the hat out of the water. I just need a hook. Perfect choice. Okay, want to toss it, George? Hmm, we need more weight. Huh. 
Okay, try again. Aha! Uh -huh. See that branch? Uh-huh. We can use it to lift the hat. We can? Hmm. <laughs> Fantastic! Oh, thank you! Thank you! Oh, this wasn't what I planned. All you did was solve problems for us. Please accept my apology. Apology for what? I had a very relaxing day. Huh? Relaxing? Exactly. Hands-on problem solving. Not like work where I just answer questions and shuffle paper. Oh, well then, you're welcome. Well, see ya. Oh, okay. Ah. Wow. Who knew relaxing could be so exhausting? Uh, <laughs> Come on, George. I think it's time for a nap. Hello, baseball fans. Looks to be an exciting contest of bears versus babies. It says our scorekeeper has a boo-boo and can't make it. George could be scorekeeper. You think you can do it, kid? You have to hang a new number each time a team scores a run. <laughs> then what are you waiting for? Go keep score! <laughs> Will Marco be able to score from first base? Slide. Time to put up a number. Ah, folks, uh, I gotta clean my glasses because I did not see five runs being scored. Hey, George, that's the wrong number. <laughs> Lower, kid. Huh? <laughs> I'll show you. You start with one, then comes two, then three. Oh! <laughs> then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's the right order. <laughs> I know. Whenever I can't remember something, I make it a song. Because songs have a way of staying with you. But what's a good song? How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then you sing it again. Oh. <laughs> you try it. George. Here's the pitch. Looks yeah. like it could get out of here. It's going, going. A fantastic grab oh. by the outfielder. That was the third out. Now the Tiger Babies Almost. are up. My mom's on the phone and I have to talk to her. I wish there was someone who could help you, but there isn't. <laughs> really? You can help? <laughs> awesome. But, but first I have to see if you're qualified. Ah. It fits! You got the job. Good news, people! This very nice monkey is taking my place. <laughs> After seven comes eight. Then nine. Then ten. This was going to be easy. George had no idea what number came after that. Um. 
Uh, mm. Excuse me. I'm number 16. I should get my drink before 17 gets his pretzel. Huh. Hold on. You can't serve 16 before you serve 14. Do you know your numbers? Cool. So what comes after 10? <laughs> well, I'll show you. It's easy. Just cover the first part of the number with your hand and look at the second part. See? One, two. So 11, then 12. Awesome! Do you want me to take over? <laughs> hey, kid, where you been? Um. Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Paul. Keep going. Keep... Home run! Marco, home run! I did it! I hit a home run! Oh. Oops! Run, George, run! <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. And third base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! Slide, George! Slide! <laughs> Save! What a hit! What a slide! The Bears have won the game! I, I did it! I hit a home run, too! And I couldn't have done it without you, George! We're so proud! That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid. Kid? There he is. The N Avenue Animal Shelter scavenger hunt is about to begin. Boys, I tell you, Team Piscetti is going to do very, very well today. Maybe we won't win, but we're going to raise a lot of money for a good cause. Who says we won't win? Ah. Well, we're pretty good. But we're never going to beat my cousin. You have a cousin, Chef Piscetti? I thought I knew all about making the mud pies. Hey. Ah. Until I saw Cousin Neil Greenies. You're each being handed the list of shapes. Some are easy, some are hard and worth more points. Whoever has the most points at the end wins the golden rectangle. You have one hour. Ready? On your mark. Get set. Hunt! Four white rectangles. It's worth four points, but you have to have all four. <laughs> well, hi, George. Circles. Five squares. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octagon. Eight more points. Good work, Giorgio. <laughs> Eggs. <laughs> They're perfectly egg shaped. Twelve points for a blue ring. Let's go. Giorgio, what is that? The balloon head? Kind of nice. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, Giorgio, did you see that? How clever you are. <laughs> A blue ring. Ah. I bet we win. Yes, 
We have a total of 48. 48 points and 21 minutes left. <laughs> What's next? Uh, only hard ones. Eight things that add up to one. Huh? What else? A hundred diamonds. Ooh. They're worth a hundred points. But you have to have all 100. Diamonds? Hmm. George remembered a diamond. <laughs> That's diamond shaped, all right. Only 99 left to go. <laughs> you rescued it! Thank you so much! <laughs> <laughs> nice breeze! Our octagon! Oh, I got him! Oh, oh no! <laughs> All gone. Ah, maybe we're not as clever as I thought. George wished he could cheer up Chef Piscetti. Ah. Then he remembered the one thing that always cheered him up. Why worry about making the best mud pie or winning a race? I got all my good friends. And if my pizza makes you happy, well then, <laughs> what more could I ask? <laughs> Nothing like a slice of pizza or two. <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> Sometimes all eight. Huh? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sometimes I eat all. <gasps> My goodness. Eight. Eight pieces. Huh? Eight slices that add up to one. One pizza. That's the answer, Natty. I love you. Oh, oh, oh shit. No! We are here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a score. As you know, the sponsors of the hunt base their donation on the number of points the teams accrue. This year, I'm proud to say the shelter will have the biggest donation ever, thanks to the winning team, Team Piscetti. <laughs> the animals of the N Avenue shelter, thank you. Oh. I'm so happy! <laughs> George was glad he'd helped the chef with the contest. But win or lose, the chef was always a champion to George. George was too excited to sleep. He wondered if it was time to start. Fifteen more minutes. <sighs> he decided to let the man sleep until the alarm woke him up. George could handle a little farm work alone. Cinchy. <laughs> the Rankins didn't say whether he should wake Leslie up before milking her. They said remember to milk her from the side. <laughs> Except George forgot. <laughs> Five chicks and one jumpy squirrel. Huh? Huh? That wasn't right. George had seen Mrs. Rankins drive the tractor, but how did she turn it off? Farm 
was more than one monkey could handle alone. George, <laughs> cut it out. Uh, oh, hi, Mike. Mike! How did you get in here? The, the, the alarm's turned off? There's, there's a pig in my bed. George! George, what are you, how did? Okay, okay, just, just sit tight, okay? Are you okay, George? <laughs> well, let's round him up, partner. I don't know if you did that on purpose, George, but it worked. <laughs> well, don't relax yet, George. We promised the Rankins we'd have the chores done before they got back. That's a dozen eggs. Ten plus two. One, two, three, four quarts, George. Nice job. All done. Just in time, too. Welcome home. So, how'd he do? Oscar won! He's the prettiest pig you've ever seen. It's official. <coughs> Tough morning, huh? Ah. Well, um, actually, yeah. You know, because you're such a good farmer, huh? Yeah, that and the fact that Mike's on your roof. What? That's how George learned to always count everything twice. And check your roof for pigs. Can you sound right here? <laughs> but Charky sure seemed to. So he had to find a way to protect that box fast. <laughs> this bell would ring if anyone bothered the box. That the box was safe, George had to figure out how to get it back to Aunt Margaret's place. What was the right size and shape to carry that box? And Charky proof, too. <laughs> Charky still couldn't resist a puddle. <laughs> Where could I have put those bowling balls? <laughs> Hi, 
Hiya, George. How you doing? Thing Charky never got tired of chasing her toys. <laughs> With all these boxes, how would George ever find the right one? George picked out all the boxes that looked like his. Which box was his? They all look the same. What else was special about his box? The smell. for straightening out all my boxes. <laughs> you need a lift? <laughs> Hop on. After all, I'm a delivery man. arrive <laughs> George was proud to give Aunt Margaret her package safe and sound well I see you took good care of it thank you <laughs> oh easy girl after I left I remembered what was in this box you didn't have to protect this one from Charky <laughs> These are the new dog toys I ordered for her. <laughs> this was the greatest ending to the greatest game Charky had ever played. All thanks to George. out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? <laughs> George, that's 
that's not the proper technique. Guess I better show you. See, the first thing you do is mark a circle in the snow. That's your foundation. Then you take the biggest blocks and fit them together like this. Yep, and when we're all done, we can just smooth out the inside. As they built it up, the igloo started to look like a volleyball cut in half. You have to cram it in so it'll hold the walls in place. <laughs> now, I'll just make a few air holes. And once we fill all these cracks with snow, it'll stay pretty warm. Oh. The inside of the igloo was smaller than George thought. <laughs> you want to build your own igloo? Sure, I wish I could help you, but I gotta fill up these cracks and then do my chores. And taller. And brought in some furniture. Wow, good window. Are you sure you want to spend the night in here, George? Okie doke. I guess it's time to make the cocoa. Okay. Wow. The only thing is, it might get cold at night. The bigger the igloo, the colder it gets. <laughs> George wasn't worried. He figured he'd just wear his coat to bed. Remember, if you get cold, you can always come inside. <laughs> All right then, be a good little monkey. <laughs> Two hours later, he woke up freezing. It was a little cold to be doing this, and it was too big a job. And maybe he still could. He could build his igloo right inside the house. A smaller igloo. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. Oh, it's freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. Wow, the heat is off. No wonder it's so cold. Oh. We did it, George! Uh-oh. George? Oh, hi, Bill. Are you sitting down? Um, no. Okay, I don't want to alarm you, but George is not in his igloo. Don't worry, he's probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! Uh, George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? Uh-huh, you were cold outside, so you thought you'd build an igloo Inside. Uh -huh. huh. Makes sense. For a city kid. <laughs> As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. <laughs> wow. There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. <laughs> George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks. And that was the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. <laughs> Open every weekend until it melted in the spring.